ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره نعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها فإن كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وإنما توعدون لآت وما أنتم بمعجزين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي Today when we stand here or sit here watching the month of barakah the month of blessings the month of rahma the month of the quran departing the souls <coughs> many and many nevertheless I would like to remind myself as well as the believers that this is sunnah al-hayah this is the tradition that Allah has created to this life nothing remain forever everything will depart and you also want to depart a few weeks ago everybody excited about ramadan is coming ramadan maybe tomorrow or after tomorrow today we're talking about ramadan is leaving and it's a lot to speak about ramadan and the leaving and the departure of ramadan but remember that this is the reality of life كل من عليها فان ويبقى وجه ربك ذو الجلال والإكرام. Everything in the existence of this life, it will perish, it will go. Yesterday is a yesterday, is not a today. Today, after few hours and after sunset, will be a different night and a different day and continue like this until you come to an end. You yourself, as well as life, as well everything, because كُلُّ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا فَانْ Everything in the surface of this earth is going to perish, going to go, and we're going to go to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with nothing other than our deed. But with the departure of the Qur'an, we have to understand that this was the miracle of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam been blessed with many miracles as well as the prophets before him. But Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala made the Quran to be the final and the major and the most miracle. Days and years and nations, communities comes and you still see how Quran is amazing and discovery about the words of the Qur'an and the verses of the Qur'an. But I want to share with you one word of the Qur'an. 
when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked to us about Ramadan and about the fasting, he said, Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran. What is the main speciality about Ramadan? What is the big thing that the cream on the top? Quran. He said, every prophet as the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa saying that Allah did not send any prophet or a messenger except he had given him enough evidence and the proofs and miracles that the people to believe in him. But Allah ooti to who? But for me, what I've been given is what? It's nothing but a Quran. But it's everything. And I found a word and I pray that I'm right. And if I'm wrong, I can be corrected. When Allah says, Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran, and I want to stop here. The month of Ramadan, which is the Quran, been sent down. Guidance, guidance, <coughs> showing you the target, the goal, the mission. Who? To the Muslims? To the believers? To the Arab? Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose this word, unless he did not say Muslims? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use other alternative words in different verses. That Allah is the one who had created you and among you Muslims and kafir. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya ayyuhal nasu inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha. Allah talking about being male or female. Why Allah choose the word Ness, because Ness is general, but Muslims is specific. He became, with a certain addition, became a Muslim. And after this, he higher rank and became a believer, a mu'min. And after this, he became a higher rank and became a muhsin. Because the Quran is not only guidance for the Muslims, and the word nas, it cover everyone. That means kafir or Muslim, black or white, male or female, that the Quran is guidance. The Quran is guidance. Doesn't matter what country, what position you are in, in your government or in your society, you need this guidance, even if you don't believe in the Quran. If you go by the law of Allah concerning criminal acts and the pun capital punishment as example, you are not going to see the suffering that the people have today, even if you don't believe in the Quran. Even if you don't believe in the Quran, the condition of the people will change in their safety, in their security. So Allah says the Quran is guidance for all mankind. And now when you take the Quran and put it in belief and action, now you're going to be a Muslim, you can be a Mu'min, you can be a Muhsin, you can be from Awliyaullah, all these things. But in Nas, so Allah made the Quran to be for everyone, male or female, in whatever system you have, in whatever project that you're going, adl, justice, fairness, doesn't matter, you Muslim or not Muslim, if you practice the Quran, even you don't believe in the Quran, you will see the security on the land. فَلْيَعْبُدُوا رَبَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ الَّذِي أَطْعَمَهُمْ مِنْ جُوعٍ وَآمَنَهُمْ مِنْ خَوْفٍ that regardless they believe or not, Allah is still feeding them. And Allah, when He feed you, He did not only feed you fruits and vegetables, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also feeding your mind and your heart. And this is what makes it sin. This is what makes a human being. There is something different between you and animals, between you and the birds, between you and everybody else. 
So you are less, and with the Quran, you come a Muslim, you come a believer, you come to be in a better condition, in higher ranks. Hodaliness. Whosoever takes this Quran, put it in action, regardless, believe it or not, they will be successful, at least for this dunya, at least for their society. Whenever you respect or practice the traffic law and red means to stop and yellow caution and green it go, it will be safety for everybody regardless. You accept the system or not. You're going to save your car, you're going to save your life and other people are going to be saved from you. So when Allah made this Quran, He made it a miracle and a challenge and also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it for our security in general, regardless who believe in it or not. Hodaliness. So when you go out of the guidance, the clash it comes. <laughs> now you don't know and you will go how far to such a degree that now male and male they want to go in intimate relationship female and female and you're going to get worse and worse and will be male or female a human being and animals and Allah knows best what else why because so called freedom freedom of what is the shaitan is whispering to you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calling in you and shaitan is calling in you. The akhirah is calling in you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling in you. So which one that you're going to take? Hodaliness. With the hidayah, you can be successful in this life or only successful in this life but others will be successful in this life as well as in the hereafter. Maybe some of you don't understand what I'm talking. I know it's my language, it's not. But try to understand that Islam helps the society, helps the kuffar, helps the male and the female, regardless they believe in it or not. And their security is not going to be secure unless they leave the system. How many people they trying to make it work, but it's not working. And they, co they talk about democracy and all the things, but nothing but words. And when people been moved from the office and no elections there, you found how much money they were stole. The same people, because there is no wa'id. There is no admonishment. There is no anything that disturb you. So if you can make it, with nobody see it, you will do it. But now when you turn from non-Muslim to a Muslim and believing in the Quran, and you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees you and hears you, when you are, now will be a different in your life. Hodaliness. Remember this. People are not people in general, but that means they kafir or Muslim or whatever. They are not going to have a better life in this life unless they left Quran even if they did not believe in the Quran. Somebody said, but we look in the Quran who didn't see things, certain things. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had told us, Indeed, indeed, ala inni utitu al-Qur'an wa mithlahu ma'a. Indeed, I've been given the Qur'an and a similar book. Yes, you don't find this exactly the spelling in the Qur'an, but you found the explanation in the tradition of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wa ma kana rabbuka nasiyya. Allah never forget anything. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the Qur'an and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also gives the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the sunnah, his teaching. So you're like a train and you have two tracks. You could not only say 
is in Quran or is not in Quran? Is in Quran or a Quran and the Hadith or is the Hadith only? Okay, we found it in Quran, we found it in Hadith, but my understanding is different from your understanding. The Prophet ﷺ had told us that خير الناس قرني ثم الذين يلونهم ثم الذين يلون أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم The best of the best My century, my people, my Sahaba We could not stick our hands, our mind in Quran and Hadith without seeing how the Sahaba this is the foundation of Islam. How did the Sahaba understand such a verse and such ayah? So we need these three things to be guided by. So if we don't know anything about Ramadan and the blessing of Ramadan and the treasures that came in Ramadan and they started coming during Ramadan, other than having this words to God be in action, is sufficient for you. Life is not going to be true life until you get to know how you're going to approach this life. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created life and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make means and ways for everything to work. So the man is corrupted with things because he think this is the one that whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had misguided him because he took his desire, his thinking, not the Quran, not the Hadith, not the understanding of the Sahaba. He want to live his own life. He want to understand the Quran his own way. He want to practice Quran but no Hadith. He want to practice Quran and Hadith but with no reference how did the Sahaba understood it? And this Ummah never ever can get together on something haram or wrong. We have to understand how to approach. So if we have nothing to understand about Ramadan and the speciality of Ramadan other than the Quran came and they started coming in Ramadan. So this is the light. This is the guidance. This was going to take you from darkness to light, from jahiliyyah to knowledge. This was going to make you a human being, at least. And after this, you will see the beauty of life. My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, is allowed to say about the word of Quran and to understand about the speciality of this month. But I know it's time is limited. Should we talk about Ramadan? Should we talk about Eid? Should we talk about the Catholic Fitr? Should we talk about the Qiyam al -Layl? Should we talk about the Atikaf? It's a lot, a lot. But sorry that most of the Muslims, they don't have time other than Jum'ah. I'm sorry. And I'm telling you, if you are not going to make a sacrifice and the child try to change your attitude towards Islam that is Jum'ah and this is And even if you come to Jum'ah, you come in halfway. Inna Allah la yughayru ma biqawmin hatta yughayru ma bi anfusim. To be a student, to pass the exam, you have to go to every lecture. Even if you don't like the professor, even if you don't like the subject. Don't you think, you understand, it's going to fly by only coming to Jum'ah. I'm telling you, we need to read the Quran. We need to examine the Quran. We need to see every word in the Quran. We need to live. And we need to carry Quran to us. It's a lot, I want to tell you. It's a lot that you can see in this gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given and blessed this ummah with. Let's be grateful, be thankful. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can increase his blessings on you. If you are being great, if you be grateful, Allah will give you more. The Quran is there. But look to the Quran. Take one mushaf and give you experiments to do it with your own self, like you do it in the lab.
take one mushaf after Quran, after Ramadan, put it in a certain place on the shelf. Come after two, three months and make a mark with a pencil, a small mark, and see if this Quran will be moving from its place or not. We have many Qurans. We are given free Quran, but until Quran became part of our life, part of our system, breathe Quran, talk Quran, sleep with the Quran, get up with the Quran, until you get the light, there's no change. Indeed, Allah doesn't change the condition of the people until they change themselves, the inside first. أقول قول هذا واستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه رسول الله. الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على مبعوث رحمة للعالمين. We approaching maybe even we don't have another جمعة in Ramadan or maybe we have. A Friday khutbah in Ramadan, but it's going to be Eid, Allah knows best. And I know I'm limited with the time, and I know how some people in the community feel about the subject of so-called celebration of the Eid. There is nobody against you to celebrate. But we want to know why we celebrate. And we want to understand how to celebrate. And how far we can go with our celebration. And after this we give an argue and everybody may raise voice. And oh, we understand, feel the imam that uh, uh, always in our way. And we have kids and the kids want to be happy. But hold a minute. Before you want your kids to be happy, happy about what? About what? Oh, we have Eid, brother. I know you have Eid. I'm a human being like you. I used to have kids like you. They are not kids now, they are adults, okay? I understand. I understand how they feel. I still remember my life when I was a kid. But how are you going to? For what reason first? It's because they are kids. What are you rewarding them for? What are you going to spend thousands of dollars? And everything, the kids, the kids, the kids. For what? I want to understand who brought his kids, he or she, to join us one day in Salat al Taraweeh. How many of our kids had fast? How many of our kids had came Jum'ah? During Ramadan, oh brother, we want the kids to know that is Eid. Eid what? What is Eid? What is Eid? The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, in Hadith, which was celebrated and showing the action of the Sahaba, because we learn from when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came and was Yawm Eid, day of Eid. And Aisha radiallahu anha, she have two little girls there, and she said, وَمَا هُمَا بِمُغَنْدِيَةَيْ They are not a singer. That means kids saying things, okay? All right. So Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came in, and these kids, they are singing to Aisha, or entertaining themselves. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam entered, and he turned his face to the other side, and he lay down. When Abu Bakr Siddiq came later on, and he heard these girls making, singing, say, Amizmaru shaytani fi bayti Rasulullah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he didn't know that the Prophet inside. He didn't see him. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam removes the cover and say, Da'ahuma Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr leaves him alone. فَإِنَّ لِكُلِّ قَوْمٍ عِيدُ وَهَذَا عِيدُنَا is every nation they have a feast and this is our feast notice the hadith is say wama huma they are not singers they are not professional that mean we have to have this they play so let them play 
In another hadith, we see the Abyssinians were playing something like martial arts in the, in the mosque. He said, let the Jews get to know, let other nations get to know, other believe to know that we have fusha in our deen, that we have an ease and we have time for celebration. But how to celebrate? When the Prophet وسلم, this is my point here, that I'm not against the community or few people in the community, okay, is saying, Kulu washrabu, watasabdaku, bagayri israfin, wala makhila, al kamakala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Kulu washrabu, watasabdaku, wal bisu, bagayri israfin, wala makhila. And Allah is saying, Wallavina ida anfaku, lam yusrifu, walam yaktur. We have to take a middle course in everything. My brothers and sisters, I've been very honest with you. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us, وَأَنَّ هَذِهِ أُمَّتُكُمْ أُمَّةٌ وَحِدًا And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, مَثَلُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ فِي تَوَادِّهِمْ وَتَرَاحُمْهِمْ وَتَعَاطُفِهِمْ كَمَثَلِ الْجَسَدِ الْوَاحِدِ إذا اشتكى منه عدو تداعى له سائر الجسد بالسهر والحمى أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم We are one nation regardless if you're in the east or in the west under the ground or above the sky wherever you are feeling you want to make a celebration and you want to give your kids who did not come to the mosque once in Ramadan and if they came they're running from the bathroom to the living room. Nothing about Salah, Taraweeh, nothing. You want to celebrate it with them only for the right $5,000. $5,000. A sister last night tried to get approval about bringing coffee truck here. And don't worry about the money. I'm worried about money, but even if you pay it from your bucket, how much? Five or six hundred dollars. Only to drink coffee. Brothers, do you know the people are going to want to name countries? Wallahi, wallahi, I swear by Allah. You go to the garbage bags that you will throw it away in the dumpers, in the trash can, open it to find something to eat. And you're spending five thousand dollars. Brother, I am going to give the check. Don't worry about it. It doesn't matter if it's your money or the much good money. Where is the feeling? Where is the crying babies that could not find even dry milk? And you going as a Muslim because entertainment. Entertainment to who? The kids, brother. Yes, I know kids. All the Muslim kids, they want to know that there is a Eid. But did they even pray one time with us? Did they ever, for whole 30 days, come to the mosque to pray? And if they come, about what? 25 kids out of the whole Ummah? And what? They're running back and forth from the bathroom to the musalla to, to all the things. Yes, I know, you're going to write the check. We're going to collect the money, don't worry about it. I'm telling you, one of the countries, and I don't want the name, a whole family, a whole family, I send them $50 a month for the whole family. And they live waiting for the 29th so they can email me and say, send another payment for the next month. $50 a whole family living. Muslim family. $50. And for one day, for five, six hours, I'm going to put some entertainment for $5,000. I'm not again is that you have Toys, you have things, they play with the kids, all these things. But what? Can you be serious? Did you try to bring your kids to the mosque during Ramadan? Did they come to make with us one taraweeh? 
and this you're going to spend five thousand and this only one we did not talk about the food we did not talk about you understand the parking lot for the church and paying the, and all this expensive so by the end of the day you spend about ten twelve thousand dollars in one day celebration is this not israf no it's not israf okay you don't feel about your brothers and sisters that just been hit by the earthquake. They are in the streets. And you're going to go spend $5,000 to go up and down to sit on a makeup horse and wake up, please. Feeling, caring, feeling where is the Ummah that cry for each other? $5,000. And a family, three kids and the mother, because she's a widow, $50 for a whole month to feed them. How do you feel about what we're doing? Are we really practicing the Sunnah? The Prophet allows the two girls to play, play the dove. They are not professional, huh? but allow it because it's Eid. Everybody have a Eid. We have a Eid also, okay. But be reasonable. It's not a fight. Why we keep fighting with the Imam? Why? Because the Imam telling you something, you don't want to hear it. You don't, you don't want to hear it. Oh, he's an Imam and we are young. So we pay the money. He has his mind, I have his mind. You understand the hadith is a way different. Can we come to a common term? Can we be reasonable? Without Israf, without being a spendthrift, without fighting each other and stay for six months, we did not talk to each other because he fight about the Eid. Come on, stuff, enough. Forty years gone, and we're still going through the same problems. When we go, when we can see what the Imam see, when we can have some feeling and mercy for other Muslims who did not have a piece of candy that you, with a penny, you can buy 10 piece of candy. They did not have it in the Eid. They did not have clean water to drink it in the Eid. And now you're going to get a truck to give the people free coffee here, but you're going to give them $500 only for coffee. Where is this the Muslims that the Prophet said, like a one single body? If one limb suffer, the whole body is suffer. Please live the suffering of other Muslims wherever they are. Think about them. Be reasonable how you spend the money. I don't want to go to hellfire. I'm not going to try to please you and try to tell you the way how I feel. And I'm open for discussion. I'm open for conversation. I'm open for debating, dialoguing. But we don't have to be everything, you understand, rabbit on the children. Under the children's name and the Eid name, we do things. These things is pleasing to Allah. $5,000 for one thing, rights only. Wallahi, brothers, the only thing I can say, where is the Quran? Say, وَلَكِنْ لَا تُحِبُّونَ النَّاسِحِينَ But the problem is what? You don't like those who advise you. I'm not, I'm not, I understand, looking for anything from what I'm saying. All what I want for you to think, and at least hear me, and know from where I come, and what I'm caring for. Enough is enough. It's not time for debating, dialoguing, and all these things. It's time for us to care. At least, let's care. I'm telling you, and I swear it by Allah, that there are some Muslims <coughs> living, they did not have a clean water, or filter water. They wait for the water to go, stand down, 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 until the mud go, and they take this water and they drink. And we're spending $5,000 only for rights. Brother, it's not every day Eid, and this, we have to make them happy. Happy about what? Happy about what? They did not come even for one day or one Jummah. 
Oh, brother, I brought my son. I'm not talking about your son and his son. I'm talking about us. If you're talking about 200 people here, ask them how many of their kids. You could not find more than 5% or 2% of the Muslim brought their children for Qiyam or for Tahajjud or for Iftar. And if they come, you understand, they're running all over the place. And you know what's what. I'm serving, here, serving you here for the pleasure of Allah. I'm here like one of you, try to hear me one time, and they try to think, and they try to think about it. And after this, I don't mind. You can advise me. You can correct me. But we don't want emotions. We want reality. All what I'm saying, there is other Muslims that they can live a whole year eating with this $5,000. I'm telling you, I'm dealing with refugees and different people. And I said to you, a whole family with $50, they eat for a whole month. And we're going to go under the name of Eid. We bring in a truck with music, or we bought in, in toys. And after this, the next day is not Eid, everything bye-bye, $5,000, only for rides. Let's try to look to our children in a better way. You really concerned about your children? Give, bring them to Salat al Juma. Mm -hmm. Your children, especially those who have a public school, they did not attend one single Juma for nine months because they have a school. And after this, you want to give them entertainment? I know we have three boys or three, two girls. They come to the mosque, okay? But I'm talking about, we're talking about general. So please, try to think about it. And the khutbah is recorded. I know. And you can hear it again and think before we come and sit and keep arguing and fighting over, can we spend it or not? You are not paying from your bucket. The masjid is not going to pay. Doesn't matter, your money and my money, all the things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have brought it for purpose for us to utilize. And we don't be among the most refill, the spend the thrift, the people who do not use their brain, they only use their emotion. I beg Allah's forgiveness for me and you and all the Muslims everywhere. Allahumma taqabbal minna siyam. Allahumma taqabbal minna siyam. Wal qiyam. Oh Allah, forgive us for what we did, our short to come in Ramadan. Oh Allah, give us more Ramadan and more Ramadan. Wa akhir da'wani an alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin.